All right guys, welcome back to Task Force Off-Road. My name is George, and in this one, I have something I've wanted to do for a while. I have one of the guys I served with in the Marine Corps here. He's a US Navy corpsman, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically a medic for the Marine Corps, but they're way better than Army medics, so don't even, don't make the comparison. But point being, he's gonna do some first aid for, stuff for us today, so I hope you guys get some good information out of this, and it's definitely something to take with you when you're out on the trailer, out over landing. So I hope you enjoy this one. All right, guys. So as uh, my friend was introducing me, I am uh, Joshua Corley. And today, like he was saying, we're going to be doing some first aid and some trauma. So a little bit about me and my background. I served as United States Navy Corpsman for the last eight years or so and qualified to teach tactical combat casualty care and first aid as an instructor. So that's why we're going to kind of dive into this today and give you the importance of what to do, when to do, and how to do. So let's go ahead and take a look over at our, our gear here. I've got a few different setups for you. So basically what you want to know first off is why first aid is important and what is the, the deal behind it. So first aid, as you can imagine, is one of those things where if you are hurt or you have some kind of wound or something that's going to deter you from you know, having uh, some kind of infection or something that's going to uh, produce bodily harm to you, you want to make sure you've got the tools to prevent that and to fix it. So you've got to cover different builds here. So first I've got my first aid kit, my little one, right? So this I'll probably bring into my backpack or something along the lines when I'm not doing some large scale operation or some kind of training or something along those lines. So very simple, very minute, but the most important thing you wanna have in any of your guilt or excuse me, any of your guides or any of your packs is gonna be the trauma shears. These I've had for the past six years or so, and these are from American Rescue, and I absolutely love these things. You don't need like a $70 talent cutters with any kind of glass or anything to break them. These are basic, they're sharp, and they'll last you for a really long time. This model in particular has just got the basic things that you're gonna need, such as bandages, wraps, some antiseptic towels and towelettes, bacitracin, something along that line just to make sure that you are getting the infection under control because the worst thing you want to do is have an open wound while you're out in the middle of the woods or whatever right so this i would probably bring with me if i'm doing again something very small very minute and something that does not endanger me all that much now what we're going to move into next is a different build and then we'll kind of talk about the different items that are inside of it and when and how to use them so like we said earlier i'm going to keep these scissors out though for the meantime so now we have the bigger case, which I know y'all have kind of recognized right off the bat. So this is what I'm gonna bring if I am gonna be doing something large scale or I have multiple people with me, like a hunting trip, for example. I wanna make sure that I have the most amount of gear possible so that way I can be prepared for any situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Whoop, my little whistle blew. <laughs> Fell right out there. <laughs> gotta have a whistle. Gotta have the rape whistle. Yeah, you gotta have the whistle. Make sure people know what's going on. So we'll need to display that for the viewers here. Okay, so a lot of different stuff in here, right? So like the little first aid kit, and you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, well, why can't you fit all of this inside the little bag? Well, it's common sense, right? So mainly it's because of the space, which obviously you can see that right off the bat. But the next thing you can do is use this more as the replenishment tool for your smaller bag. So if there's things inside this first aid kit where you're like, mm, I'm not really comfortable with that, or hey, I don't really know how to use it, you can bring it from your uh, supply case here and you can put it inside your, big, your little bag. That's what I like to do, but you can do whatever you'd like. So obviously little things such as bandages, rolls, all important aspects to have while in a first aid kit. Coban, tape, all things that will require minimal amount of talent and skill to use. And forgive me, we're on a car, so it might just roll off here, but you know, whatever. We'll, we'll work with what we've got. Now with first aid, there's a different backgrounds and different techniques that you can use for certain things. But the main thing that I like to focus on first is obviously you've just cut yourself, right? Kind of, again, common sense, kind of basic on what it is that you're actually gonna be using and what you're gonna be doing. But the number one thing you wanna make sure that you have is gloves along with those scissors. You gotta make sure that you're not putting your hands inside of other people's blood because you just don't know what kind of toxins or what kind of bad you know, enemies they've got inside that bloodstream. So again, another set of scissors, like I said, most important thing to probably have other than the gloves, protects yourself and it enables you to cut bandages, cut cloth. So touching base on the scissors, and the gloves, I'm just gonna harp on that again real quick. So why scissors are important. So A, you need to have scissors because you wanna be able to cut tape and you wanna be able to cut adhesives to size. But then also, if you have something uh, like clothing on somebody and they've cut their leg open, you gotta make sure you can get to the wound. If you can't see it, you can't treat it. So that's why that's so important. Got some iodine that I've used in the past, which I didn't throw away, cause I'm a bad boy. I'm bad. Keep all my, all my garbage here so that way I know what I've used. All right, so I've got pretty much the main things out here, and you can pick up one of these kits either in Cabela's, Bass Pro Shop, or probably your local sports store. They'll definitely have them in more likely the camping section of the actual store. All right, so we've got our gloves, we've got our scissors. Now we want to talk about what kind of bandages to use and when to use them. 
So I've got my smaller ones here and you don't need to have any kind of fancy band-aids to use. You basically just see a wound and you kind of need to guesstimate the size on when to actually apply it. So there are three steps to a simple first aid and we call it CAB, circulation, airway, and breathing, okay? So obviously circulation is if there's blood coming out of the body, you wanna make sure that it's not severe enough that you will bleed out or have any kind of issue to where if you can't control the bleeding, that it becomes a problem later on. So that's why the circulation portion is so important. So we've got some different stuff here. So obviously minimal cuts, you're gonna have your band-aids and your small wraps. And then once you get into the bigger things like any kind of like arterial bleed, we'll move into tourniquets and then also some bigger bandages, which I'll show you here in a few minutes. But when you have your smaller ones, the band-aids will work fine. But if you'd like to go ahead and throw some uh, antiseptic or some kind of uh, bacitracin on there or neosporin or whatever to have you, just to kind of fight the infection, totally fine, not a big deal. And as far as like how much to put on, as a personal preference, I like to just use the entire packet. It's there for you, it's gonna be single use. Throw it on there after you wipe off the wound. Um, so that way you get all the dirt and all the crap off it. That's probably not gonna help you um, in the future. And then just apply the bacitracin, cover it, and move on. So with the actual wounds themselves, I mentioned uh, cleaning off the, the blood and all the dirt. Also very important, right? Because you want to get any kind of dirt or bacteria inside of your wound. So let's say, for example, I cut my hand open and it's bleeding pretty good. So the first thing I want to do is apply my gloves, probably cut my scissors uh, for the bandage to size and make sure that it's nice and, uh, you know, symmetrical to my hand or to my cut. And then I can just use one of the uh, following items, either a wrapper or maybe just like a four by four of gauze and I'll just wipe the blood away and then just kind of get all the, the grime that's off there. And then I can go ahead and place my bandages and bath trace and antiseptic to the best of my ability. So when I talk about antiseptic, you've got two different options here. You can either use iodine if you have it, unless you are allergic to iodine, which you need to make sure that you're careful of um, or any kind of fish allergy or you can use something as simple as like an alcohol wipe, which I think I've got here as well. So very standard, very <laughs> simple to have, uh, very, very uh, inexpensive, and the iodine might cost you a little more, but that's okay. All right, so common sense, right, with a lot of these things. So we're gonna go ahead and move into some bigger stuff, probably more of the important items. So when we talk you about first aid, this is gonna be a little more advanced first aid, but we talk about circulation, airway, and breathing. Along with your scissors and your gloves, it is always a very good idea, just in the off chance that someone falls, splits their leg open, and is bleeding profusely, you have some heavier bandages and some things to control the bleeding. Now for me, an example, you're probably noticing that this thing is just flopping around inside my little bag, and that's on purpose. I do not like to have what is called a tourniquet, that's what this device is called, stuck to any surface of my bag, because I wanna make sure that it's easily accessible and I can rip it out and use it at any time. So you're probably looking at this device for the most of you who are not medical and thinking, what the hell is this thing and why do we use it? So if you look at the standard anatomy of it, you can see that there's a base plate, right? And you're probably wondering, okay, well, what is that for? This is to press up against the bone, which will then condense uh, the artery against it using this little windlass here. So I'll take this out of my pocket and demonstrate. Before you use a tourniquet, you need to make sure that you are familiar with how to use it and when to use it. So for blood or any kind of like heavy bleed like we talked about earlier, we have our bandages that will be used for small scale wounds and any cuts. The main thing you want to look for is anywhere inside of the femoral arteries, the brachial arteries, and things of that region. And the reason you're going to know that it's arterial blood is because it's going to be a very bright red color and or it will be spurting out of the body. That's a very, very telltale sign that you are in danger and you need to apply a tourniquet. Which any uh, course as far as uh, American, even there's an Odin medical course that will teach you how to apply tourniquets for the civilian sector, or if you're in the military, then just find like a local CLS course and they'll help you out. So what you'll do is we'll place this in. We'll see how our friends are to come up here on the driveway. We'll say, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> how you, what's hey, going on? <laughs> how you doing? So, tourniquets, very important. So what I'm gonna do is, in theory, I will be trained and know how to use these. For personal preference, I like to make sure that when I have them applied, that my actual tail here will be pulled away from my body as opposed to across. But just to give you a brief idea of how it works. Now make sure that when you're using your tourniquet, you don't have a special one that has two loops as opposed to the one. This one is a one introductory method as opposed to the two. So just make sure that you have an idea of what that looks like before you use. Basically what you'll do, just apply high and tight as you can because depending on where the wound is, you want to make sure that you're roughly either two inches above where the wound is or you're as high and tight as possible in case of the off chance that you need to get somebody out of there quick and you don't know where the wound is. 
but you're always gonna go above the knee or above the elbows, never below. So I've got my base plate here, I've got my windlass, and what I like to do is put my fingers in here, and as I'm pushing against the leg, I'm also pulling against the leg as well. Because when you go to actually apply this, you won't have to turn it as much. Now what I have is the windlass, and I will then turn the actual windlass around, and three is plenty. Like You can probably already see how tight that is, and that bad Larry is not going anywhere, I promise you. So, tape it across, and if you got a Sharpie, write the time it was applied, and then go from there, and I can already feel my blood supply. <laughs> it is cutting off from my leg, so we're going to go ahead and take that off. But main premises for that, again, is major arterial bleeding, or bleeding that is uncontrolled and cannot be stopped. So that is the basis of a tourniquet. And obviously with this, you wanna make sure you get it on as soon as possible and also practice with them. This is not a practice tourniquet by any means. So if you have one that you're is disgusting and never gonna use again, you wanna use that one instead of the actual ones because they're really only supposed to be a one-time use, one and done mainly. So again, scissors in the same bag, right? The big takeaway from all this is that first aid and its own entity is very important because you wanna make sure that you are A, when someone is hurting or when they're having some kind of cut or some kind of traumatic moment to their life, however small or however large, that you are being the best that you can in that moment just to uh, cover it up, get it fixed up, and then get it switched out. So with the bleeding, of course, is very important, but I mean, again, situation will dictate what you use and how to use it, but for the most part, I trust that you'll have common sense to be able to apply a simple bandage <laughs> and maybe some bacitracin. So with first aid in particular, that's really the most important part. And then uh, maybe in a later episode or something, we can talk about splinting and how that's important for fractures and stuff like that. But for the main stuff, you can get a, a first aid kit from any local store and just kind of go from there. So hopefully this video was helpful for the most part. Uh, and maybe next time we can dive in a little deeper. But other than that, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. All right, hey Josh, thanks for coming out, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Me and Josh served together, so I, I'm very thankful that he'll come out and do this. And it sounds like he wants to do another one with a little more uh, advanced medicine. I don't know if I'd say advanced, but uh, definitely more for like bone fractures and stuff. Which, guys, this is really helpful out on the trail if like a rock falls on someone when you're uh, stacking rocks to get over an obstacle, or if you're overlanding and you're out in the woods for a couple days. So th this is definitely relevant to the off-road genre that we try to appeal to on this channel but if you like this one like share comment subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one peace yeah it's that first day of first grade that cute girl your third day that backpack that snapback you've had since the third grade the first time you got laid the worst time you got played it hurt but you're